What is a dollar sign 100 plus product that is definitely worth a purchase? Buy some luxurious bed sheets. My girlfriend just doesn't get it. She made me switch out my high thread count sheets for a $60 Walmart set that matches. What the f this she's like sleeping on wool. Dude grow a pair and take the bed back. Put the good ones back on. Turn the lights off and say, see, they match. Dashboard cam. The more I drive, the more I wish I had one. People are effing stupid on the road. Pedestrians and bikers too sometimes. Be nice to have some visual evidence, if someone doing something stupid causes me to be in a wreck. I recommend the G1WH. It's got a wider field of view. Is a black and has great quality. Check out slash r slash dash cam for links to them on Amazon. 50 bucks to save you thousands. How else are you supposed to get that sweet sweet karma when she goes down while you're driving? A good vacuum cleaner. It will change your life. Seriously. When I first used a Rika, I was disgusted by the amount my Dyson missed. You seem to like vacuums. People should also realize that Dyson is the Beats by Dren of vacuum cleaners. Yes, they're better than the average bagless vacuum, but way overpriced and can't perform as well as a good bagged vacuum by meal, Rika, Sibo, etc. It's like I had a real effect on Reddit. If you own an older house, new energy efficient windows and insulation is absolutely worth it. The upfront cost is fairly high, but the energy cost savings is significant. In the UK, you can get loft and cavity wall insulation for free. No idea why, but the government have a big pot of money to pay for it. Get on it before it runs out. You can get grants for energy saving home improvements in the US. Two. In certain circumstances, it's because saving energy is good for everyone, so the grants end up less than the total cost of providing more energy. Good internet. Ah yes. Downloading cars has never been easier. A quality mattress. I learned the value of a good bed from the sims. It was accurate. How is your vibromatic love bed? A good bed equals more efficient sleep equals more time for activities. You spend roughly one third of your life lying on one. It's a good idea to make it comfortable. Bullsh. I spend all my life laying on one. As of now, I'm laying down on my bed while red eyeing from my phone. Second monitor. Third monitor. Hall monitor. A good set of knives. A quality set of knives will not only last longer, but will also cut much better. Jahenkels is what I own. Spent $75 for the chef's knife and $85 on the rest. 4 years and they cut, like they are brand new. Also have to throw pots and pans in here too. Your crappy Walmart brand pots and pans are going to last you maybe 6 months, before they start to wear and tear. Picked up a set of stainless steel Calfullen pots and pans 8 years ago, and I finally gave them to my friend. Since I upgraded, they had a few scratches, but overall they still looked brand new. Does this mean I can't interest you in these knives I'm selling for the summer? They're from this great company, Vector. Have you heard of them? You know, those knives are actually pretty good. My rumored has a set and they cut rather well. I'm not sure if they are good compared to similarly priced pieces, but they definitely do anything I need them to. I'm not gonna deny that they run a pyramid scheme. Their marketing and hiring strategy makes them seem really sketchy, though. Thanks slash you slash King Robert for pointing out my misunderstanding of the term pyramid scheme. Work boots. A pair will cost you 100 bucks, hurt your feet, break down quickly, and wear out in under a year a good pair will coat you 150 to 250, average being around 200, and will last you years, while being comfortable and sturdy. I know a ton of people that have bought a shtai pair of work boots at one point. I don't know anyone that's bought tush tie pairs of work boots. I wear $60 military engineer boots. They're the best boots I've ever had. I've had Timberlands, Red Wings, second best, Wolverines etc. I need a new pair of boots. Where do I get these engineer boots? I went through 3 pairs of shtai work boots until I finally manned up and bought some chipuas. I've worn them every day for the past 2 years now ankle deep in mud for half of that and they are still in great shape i'm proof of the poor people spend more than rich people theory a poor man and a rich man buy boots the poor man spends 20 dollars the rich man spends 80 the 20 dollar boots will last two months the 80 dollar boots will last a year over the course of a year the poor man will spend 120 dollars on boots 
Meanwhile the rich man will spend 80. Ah, the good old vines boots theory of economy. A safe and a painting. Why a painting? To hide your safe behind obviously. Where you stash more paintings. Sonic a toothbrush. Normal ones and the rotating ones were causing my gums to recede. This thing leaves my teeth feeling like I just left the dentist. It will probably save you cash from repair work at the dentist. Kindle Paperwhite. I thought it would be meh, but since the purchase I have been reading 100x more than usual. Convenience goes a long way. Comcast cancellation fees. But why do you want to cancel? Sir, I'm not with Comcast, but when I cancelled my old ice from the guy was hassling me. Why I wanted to quit I said I'm becoming Amish. You could hear the confused tone in his voice after that. The correct answer to this is, because I no longer want to pay for shows and services that I don't want to watch or use I can get everything online. See you in hell. A well-built desktop or laptop computer, it'll last you years, if you take care of it, and bring entertainment as well as practical purposes, yup, the only thing you need to remember, is that you should get 4GB RAM sticks or larger, what processor socket you have, and know how to change a graphics card, instead of getting a new PC every few years, I just swap some stuff out, and save $500. PC part picker has compatibility mode, choose a CPU, and have fun picking parts out. An executive membership to Costco, it's slightly more than $100, and if you shop there regularly the 2% cash back pays for your membership, that's worth it, if you're going to spend more than $2500 per year there, if not it's actually cheaper, to get the gold membership. Sorrel boots. Snowy winters will be no match for me. I've had my sorrels for 17 years and counting. We have winter 6 months out of the year. And I walk my dog every day in those things. My dog is 11 years old. KitchenAid stand mixer. They are effing awesome. My grandma bought her first KitchenAid mixer back in the 40s or 50s. And eventually gave it to my mom. Still works. Still fits all modern attachments. Great investment. My mom used to have one that she got as a wedding gift in the early 70s. She bought a new one and gave it away. I almost cried when I found out that thing was a beast that never quit. They are like the Jansport backpacks of mixers. They seriously are outstanding. I will add in a Vitamix or Blend Tech Blender. 300 to 500 USD depending on model. But it will be the last blender you ever buy. Absolutely this. I always wanted one. Ended up finding one at home since $4.99 as a fluke, and it's become a vital component in my kitchen. They are well worth the money. The attachments aren't cheap, but they are worth the price. An SSD. The 10 second boot times are too good, but now I don't have time to prepare snacks. The ultimate first world problem. Computer is too fast. They don't have to be over $100 anymore. Woo. It's worth getting 256 GB for around $100, rather than saving $30 and getting 128 GB. I feel like Crucial MX100 really accelerated this price cutting recently. Good SSDS. My PC boots up faster than my monitor does, and I'm sitting here with a drive that can't even stream 1080p video in real time. As I first heard on Reddit, though the saying is elsewhere as well, don't skimp on things that separate you from the ground. Particularly shoes, tires, and mattresses. I can speak to all of these. When I first started student teaching, I didn't have good, professional looking shoes. I ended up wearing 2 inch heels the first week, and I was limping. My feet were hurting so bad. My mom took me to a good shoe store, and bought me two pairs of shoes, one of which was over $100. I've had those shoes for a while now. They're sturdy, comfortable like you wouldn't believe, and perfect for teaching, or just generally being on my feet all day. I now own a few pairs, that cost close to $100 or more, but for my job, it's worth it. I teach in northern Wisconsin, in a place with long fairly brutal winters. I don't have an all-wheel drive vehicle, like most people do. Therefore, having a good set of tires in the winter is essential. It's one of those, if they are doing their job right, you might not know they've done anything at all. But when I first got those tires put on, I could tell the difference. I have a pretty sensitive back for a young person, and it's hard for me to find a bed I sleep comfortably in. There isn't a single one in my parents house, 
so visiting them is always a treat. The first thing I did once I graduated, and was gainfully employed, was spent the vast majority of my first paycheck on an $800 mattress set and frame. Every night is like sleeping on a cloud. I have no regrets. TL. Doctor shoes, tires, and mattresses. I know from experience. Any musical instrument, learning to play one is really satisfying. And, if you already know how to play, buying a new said instrument is even more satisfying. Satisfying as well as the most frustrating thing you may experience. Worth it though. If you are a smoker buy a vaporizer and quit. I was a smoker for about 8 years. A heavy one. Like 2 packs a day. I tried using a cheap gas station electronic cigarette. And bought a pack of smokes in the next 20 minutes. It was awful. Then I went to a vapor shop in my town. I've spent around $300 on stuff, and haven't had a single cigarette since January 3rd. It had completely made a difference and I highly suggest every smoker switch. To anyone reading this, you do not need to spend $300 on your first set, and you can still be miles ahead of Shtai Gas Station E6. I spent $50 on my first starter kit, and have since upgraded, but I still use that $50 set all the time. Check out slash r slash ecr if you're interested. Good quality dress shoes. They're built like tanks. Will still look great 7 to 10 years down the road. Assuming you take proper care of them. And most of them are not made in China. Most of Alan Edmonds and Alden, among others, are made in the US. I felt like such a plebe when I walked into Alan Edmonds with the $250 gift certificate my aunt gave me last Christmas and the only shoes I could afford were the ones on clearance. Great purchase though. I love them. Based aunt. If you wear glasses, prescription sunglasses, I'm not a candidate for LASIK. Yes, I'm completely useless without my glasses, which reminds me every day how lucky I was to be born in the 20th century, if you know your prescription. I would definitely recommend taking a look at Zenny Optical. I got my prescription sunglasses there for about $16. They're plastic and cheap, but they definitely do the job. And if you manage to lose sunglasses like I do, then it's not a huge hit to your wallet. And any of the frames on the site can be ordered as sunglasses. A good bike. Don't buy some cheap crappy one. I know they can be insanely expensive for the higher end fancy road bikes. But the difference between a decent $600 bike and a crappy $75 bike is huge and well worth spending extra for. On that note, get a good lock, too. This is something I see all the time, so I want to go over it. Locks are important and most of the locks I see out there are garbage. Combination cable locks. Absolute crap. You're almost better off tying your bike to the rack with a chunk of rope. All you need to do to open this lock is smash the combination rollers with a rock. Seriously. Once you crack the rings it opens right up. The only thing these locks prevent is someone just picking up your bike and walking away. Key cable locks. Better, but still not very good. The key locks are harder to open. Hard enough that no one is going to waste time trying to pick it. But the cable is still less than what you need. Bolt cutters. Or, depending on the cable, a good pair of garden shears can go through a cable lock. Skip this one and get something else. You locks. Okay. Now we are in business. Hardened you locks are awesome. They resist sawing and cutting and have solid locking mechanisms that prevent easy opening by thieves. If weight is an issue, a U lock is the way to go. Big F off chain. My personal favorite is to head down to a hardware store and buy a length of steel chain about a meter long and a solid padlock. This usually costs around $10 to $15, about the same as the locks listed above. Chains combine the protection value of a U-lock and the flexibility of a cable lock. The only drawback is weight, but with the way most people use their bikes around cities, an extra couple of kilos isn't going to kill you. Get a good lock, folks, and keep that chain lubed. Disclaimer. Okay, so there are some pretty passionate opinions around here regarding bike locks. If the comments are to be understood, there is no such thing as a bike lock that presents even the slightest trouble for an amateur thief. What I'm suggesting is not a foolproof way to prevent your expensive as f bike from being taken by someone carrying around a carjack. I'm talking about a way for broke as f students to give their beat a fixie they picked up on Craigslist for a song to keep it reasonably safe. At the end of the day, if someone really wants your bike, they're going to find a way to get it. 
these suggestions are meant as information for people who don't understand much about bike locks, and, like me, don't want to spend more on a kryptonite lock than their bike is worth. Oh, and the comment about the lube chain, was not referring to the lock, but to the actual bike chain. Squeaky chains are my trigger. On this note, if you live in a major city with a high crime rate, like I do buy the crappiest $50 bike you can, it will never get stolen, and will get you from A to B. My $15 bike laughs at your attempted frugality. Ha. A slow cooker or pressure cooker, or better yet an appliance, that can be both. You can buy much cheaper cuts of meat, and they turn out awesome in a little bit, or a lot, of time. Proper urban car, one highway, zero city. Convection microwave oven, everything I bake is perfectly done. Takes less time, and I can now bake chicken in the summer without starting a war between the oven and my sad old AC unit. Herman Miller Air and Chair, seriously, 20 year warranty and a perfect spine. It's worth the cost, now available in true black. A panini press slash griddler, anytime I come home, and want a cheap hot meal, but am too lazy to do any real cooking, bam. Break out the panini press, a slice of cheese, some pieces of salami, buttered sourdough, and you have the most delicious and cheap meal you've eaten all week. TLDR. Godzilla Refine Rocks. How about a George Foreman grill? Does the same job and costs $10 at a second hand store, or dollar sign 30 plus new? My Roku 3 plus Netflix. Best $120 I've ever spent. Having Netflix and all the other apps on Roku have allowed me to drop cable TV. I don't need a Roku when every damn thing I own can play Netflix now. I'm pretty sure if I threw an Ethernet cable at my toaster it'd start playing episodes of Orange is the New Black. I robot Roomba. This vacuum cleaner is really great. It does its job alone. The only thing you have to do is to press the button clean. However, if you don't have a pet, Roomba can fill in. I found the Roomba did about an 80% job of cleaning the floor, which doesn't sound great, but nobody is going to drag out the vacuum for a floor that's 20% dirty so it effectively eliminated vacuuming, but damn, it's like living with a mentally disabled child, the whole house has to be Roomba proofed, I never knew how many things I owned that were within millimeters of the same height as Roomba, about one day a week it would get confused, and I'd find it wedged under my bed, crying in the dark and I'd have to get a broomstick to get it out. I hope I never have to scoot a mentally disabled child from underneath my bed with a broom. DJ Ruomba. I have a first gen Roomba, and watching my cats inspect the device then cower in fear as it did its thing was alone worth the money. Unfortunately the batteries, or battery slash charging system, in the first gen Zarch, mine died. And after sending it back to our Roomba I was provided with a new Recom battery pack. It lasted all of a month or two before dying again. I picked up a brand new battery, since my Roomba was now out of warranty, but began to have the same problems with it a few months later. Eventually I just gave up and just used it as wall decor. A mechanical keyboard. You'll never want to type on anything else. It also keeps spouses awake. If it's in the bedroom, good night honey. Clack 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 clack. My wife claims the clicking is soothing, and puts her to sleep, I have a keeper, seconded, there's even an entire subreddit dedicated to them, those of us, that grew up with them in the late 80s don't understand why anyone would go back to them. A $500 beta car, why, you can park next to the idiots who take up 3 spaces in the parking lot, and can't color inside the lines an inch away from their driver's side door, and not give a crap, because it's a $500 car. One other thing, if you want to learn how to wrench on cars, but don't want to ruin a perfectly good car, a $500 beater, want to learn body work, welding a new metal to replace rust, priming and painting, $500 beater, because if you make mistakes, you're only screwing up a 500 beater, got a 75 F254 500 bucks earlier this year, I've put all of 75 bucks into it, and it's solid as a rock, it was a great buy, car being worked on, no worries, go grab truck, wanna drive out to the Bobanis, but don't want to muck up the nice rides, no worries, grab truck, wanna move a bunch of sh, grab truck, oh no, truck got broke, visit the local scrapyard, and get your Frankenstein on for cheap, 
my parents won't let me get one, because they don't want it sitting in the driveway looking ugly, and pissing off the neighbors, I don't think they've seen our neighbors driveway, if you've got the money, just buy it, if they say shh, park it really close to their car, to show them the power of the $500 beater. Two things in life worth buying the best quality of, a bed and a fridge, both will last 20 plus years. I sell appliances and I can promise you any new fridge will not last 20 plus years. Don't cheap fridges last forever too. Like I've never seen a fridge die. Just people didn't want an ugly avocado one. If you use Macup every day, some good quality Macup is needed. Also Macup remover. The Macup will last longer and have better pigmentation. You would end up spending around as much in the long run anyways for cheaper Macup. My Vitamix, I could probably use it as a lawnmower if I want it, it's a beast. I have an electric lawnmower and it claims to draw 11 amps, while a Vitamix also draws 11 amps. Now, that doesn't mean that they both use the power efficiently, but it does suggest that the motor in a Vitamix could be used to mow a lawn. Vitamix has a better warranty than most lawn mowers too. Maybe I should use my Vitamix to my lawn. Quality over the ear headphones, not Beats, Audio Technica, Chla, Sennheiser, Bayer Dynamic, etc. Do some reading over at http www.headfee.org slash before making your choice. Sony MDR7506, right around $100. You see them in studios all over the place and they've barely changed in years. One of my best purchases ever.